Hello and welcome to my garage. Today I'm going to be talking you through the oil change procedure for an MGB. In terms of how often to do this, the general consensus is around every 3,000 miles or every 12 months, whichever comes sooner. Also, if you're laying the car up for any amount of time, it's worth doing a fresh oil change before you do. If you use the car for track days or racing, I like to change the oil after every event. In terms of what we need tool-wise, there's nothing too specific. Uh, we have a socket here, three-quarter socket for the uh, for the sump plug. I've also got this tool, which is quite handy for removing the oil oil filter. Much nicer than trying to put a screwdriver through the top or anything like that if you've got a filter that doesn't want to come off. This is a, a socket type tool. As I always use the same filter in my car, this sort of tool is very useful. This has got 11 flutes and it fits perfectly on the Baldwin filter that I use. Also we've got uh, a replacement uh, copper crush washer for the sump drain plug and of course the replacement filter. In terms of what oil to use, I recommend the uh, Castrol 2050 for any sort of normal road car. It's a good oil, uh, very versatile, I think it's been the sort of same formula for years. Um, in my car I use this uh, Silclean Comp4 which is a fully synthetic blend. Both of these come from uh, OP oils and I would recommend them as a great oil supplier also for the filters as well. I've got a drip tray here to catch the used oil. There's a funnel there for topping up. Sometimes you don't really need this because the MGB has got quite a nice wide filler on it. There's also a paper towel there to mop up any mess we make. Finally, we need the jack and axle stand to put under the car and we can get started with the procedure. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to put the car sort of quite high up on axle stands as you can see. Sometimes you can do this on the deck, it just depends if you've got a nice low oil catch tray or not. Um, for this video, having it up high is going to let you see what I'm doing a bit more easily though. So let's get started. There are differing opinions on whether it's best to do the oil change with the oil hot or cold. I like to do it with the oil warm so that you know it runs out nice and easily. I can understand the benefit to both. Obviously if you do it with a cold engine then it's all sat in the bottom of the sump. So we're down underneath the car now, we can see the sump drain plug just here. It's a three quarter headed bolt, so we'll just get a socket on there and undo it. I've already got the drip tray in place, you can just see it there. We just sort of move it into position under the car. Hopefully we'll also be able to use that to catch the oil when we take off the uh, oil filter too. I'm just going to put the camera down and take the drain plug out. I hope you'll be able to see what I'm, uh, what I'm doing here. I'm just going to get this, uh, this ratchet onto the end of the uh, drain plug to get it started. Oops, so that's uh, that's just taken it off a tiny bit. Now what I've got off, so I've got a, a sort of a fairly thick rubber glove on and what I do is as I take the uh, the drain plug out I keep a little bit of pressure on it just to stop the oil leaking out and remember it is very hot so be very careful if you're doing this with warm oil. So now we can just leave that to drain. You'll see also it's a magnetic drain plug, which is quite a handy thing. We can have a look at the bottom of this and just see if we've got any contaminants or bits of metal in the oil system. And we'll leave that to drain. Now that the oil is draining, we can turn our attention to the oil filter. In this car, I have an upside down filter that sits possibly a bit lower than it will do in your car. Just to make access a little bit easier, I'm going to take the, uh, the distributor cap off and the, and the uh, HT lead so we can see a bit more clearly. In order to remove the oil filter, you may find something like this uh, oil filter strap wrench is very useful. As I only use the same type of oil filter each time, I've got a, a socket that I can put on mine from the bottom to get it undone. So I'm just going to do drop back under the car, fit the socket around the bottom of the oil filter and undo it. So I'm back underneath the car again and I've got my uh, three quarters extension with the uh, socket on the end. You may not be able to see all that clearly but basically this uh, goes onto the bottom of the oil filter and just allows me to get it started. And with its upside down filter you tend to find the oil start dripping out any moment. So I'm just going to see if I can take this off before it does. I think the uh, 
the socket stayed in place so I'm going to put my rubber glove on again and, and take the oil filter off. This does tend to be a messy part of the job so I've also taken a liberty of putting on a pair of goggles just in case any oil splashes up at me. You can see here it's starting to leak down so I'll let that fall a bit and just keep undoing this now. I'll hopefully catch it before it drops not oil and splashes it all over me. It is very slippy. There we are. So that's it. There we are. So that's that out. We'll just leave that oil draining for a couple more minutes. Before I refit the sun plug, I'll take the old crush washer off and fit a brand new one. These are very cheap, so it's worth swapping them each time. That's now ready to fit back onto the car. So you might be able to see here the uh, oil is just about finished draining out. So I'm going to fit, I'm going to fit the uh, the plug back in. There we go, and then we'll just use the uh, the socket again to tighten that up. So with this, you don't have to do it super tight. Just a, a good pinch. I don't think there is a specified torque for it but I think just a good good pull up is all it needs and just you just feel that washer just crush up in the last little pull there so I'll wipe that down and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fit the new filter for now I'm going to leave this uh, in place just to catch any oil if it, if it drips down but we'll move to the top of the engine again now so I've got the replacement oil filter here on the bench ready to go one of the nice things about the upside down filter is that you can fill it first before you put it into the car. So let me just top that up. You don't want to fill it all the way to the top because it has to go in on a very slight angle. So I'm just going to carefully fill that up. And then what I will do is just take a little bit of a little bit of oil and I'll just smear it around this uh, around this top to make sure that we get a good seal. I can put just a tiny bit more in. And that's now ready to go onto the car. I hope you'll be able to see what I'm doing here. Basically, I've got to get the new oil filter in place. I'm just hoping I don't get in the way of the camera. But it, it fits in on the other side. Just going to try and get that started. That's it. Now I'll give that a I'll give that a pinch up by hand, but with this I'll also use my socket underneath just to double check that the oil filter won't come loose when I'm when I'm racing. So let me just give that a bit more of a pinch. Then I'll be back down on the floor to tighten it up with the socket. So I'm back under the car again now, and all I'm going to do is just uh, just gently make sure this oil filter is nice and tight. I think for a road car you probably don't need to do this, especially if you've got the, the filter that's, uh, that sits above. I just like to do it to ensure that it's, just, that it's tight and won't come free in use. So that's, uh, that's probably enough for that. Now we can go up again and start uh, topping up the oil. Refilling the oil is fairly straightforward. Obviously, we take the uh, cap off. I like to put just a little bit of tissue around the filler, just in case I spill any, spill any when I uh, when I refill. So I'm just going to tuck that in there. And what I start off with, I tend to start off with around sort of four liters of oil, and then see where we are on a dipstick. So let me get. Uh, let me get started with putting the oil back in. So this is the Silkeline Comp 4 2050, which is a, a fully synthetic blend. I do recommend the Castrol for the, for the road cars. It is a it is a very nice oil. So sort of worth checking before you pour as well that that sump plug is nice and tight and the filter is on and secured. 
So let me stop there. It's been about about three litres. I'm going to put just a bit more in and then just see if it registers on a dipstick yet. Okay. So we're not quite on a dipstick yet. I will just give that a couple of minutes until it go down just in case it hasn't reached uh, all the way to the sump yet. So the oil has had a little bit of time to uh, work its way down. Let's see where we are on dipstick now. I can see we're about halfway between the minimum and the maximum. So that's sort of uh, sitting pretty good. What I like to do now is just to spin the engine over without starting it, just to make sure that the pump hasn't lost its prime and to make sure we've got good oil pressure. So I'm going to take the, the spark plugs out next, disconnect the fuel pump and then just spin the engine over. So I'm just going to start off by taking the uh, plugs out. So I'll just loosen them off and I'll take these out by hand. There we go. That's procedure. I, I just think it's good practice before starting the engine up just to make sure you've got the oil pressure there. Especially important if you've left the car sort of over winter or anything like this. I know it's not sort of strictly necessary when I've only just changed the oil. I think it's. Uh, I just think it's good practice to do so. So that's the plugs out. I'll disconnect the uh, the positive coil, the uh, coil as well. So we're inside the car now, hopefully you can see the, uh, the oil pressure gauge there. What I want to do is just turn the engine over until the oil pressure just, sh just shows on the gauge slightly. I'm not actually going to start the engine up, but I'm just going to put the ignition on. The fuel pump's been disconnected and also I have got the spark plugs out and the core disconnected too. So we'll just give this a little bit of a press and see what it does. See it's taking just a little bit of time to get the oil pressure up, so it's always good practice just to make sure. Okay, so you can see that's come onto the gauge there and the light just went out briefly. What I'll do now is ignition back off and we'll double check the uh, oil level again. I'm going to check the oil level again now. We've turn the engine over and put the oil around the engine. I can see it has actually dropped down quite considerably to uh, just below the minimum. So I'm going to top it up again. Same procedure as before, rocket cap off. And just a little bit of paper around there to watch for spillages. So I'll pop a bit in and I'm going to leave it a few minutes like before just to drop down and then we'll see what the level is. It may be, I need to Add a bit more oil to this bottle. I've let the engine sit again for a few minutes, so let me check the oil level again. So we're still sort of halfway between the minimum and maximum. What I'm probably going to do now is just start the engine up and then we'll check the level one more time. So this is all comes off, we'll put the cap back on get the spark plugs and the HT leads back in place. So that's everything back in. We've got the uh, distributor cap back in place and the, uh, the HT leads connected. We'll just make sure that's nice and tight, the, uh, the uh, filler cap. Core's connected again, so I'm going to jump in and uh, start the car up.
hear me, but you might be able to see here that the, uh, the oil's really a nice steady 80 psi, so uh, hopefully that's a job well done. Now that the engine has started to run for a few minutes, what I'll do is I'm just going to let the oil drain back into the sump. We'll have one more check on the dipstick and hopefully that's the job completed. The car sat for a few minutes now, so let's uh, check the oil level again. Okay, at the moment that's reading spot on the maximum. I'm just going to put a tiny bit more, and I like to run this engine just a sort of a, a millimetre, millimetre or two over the top. But it will be just a splash. You don't want to certainly don't want to overfill it. But just a, just a tiny bit more to uh, just top that up. And with your cap back on, that completes our procedure. I hope this video has been of some use to you, especially if you're just sort of getting started with mechanics on these sort of cars. Any questions or comments, please feel free to add them below. And also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more videos like these in the future. Many thanks. Bye.